From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good Thursday afternoon and thank you for joining us on your MTN statewide news. I'm Victoria Hill in for Andrea Lutz. Well, we start in Helena, where a bill lawmakers hoped would encourage Northwestern Energy to acquire a larger share of coastal power plants has been killed in the House. The bill was controversial and would have allowed Northwestern to charge customers more for power to make up for the plant purchase. Supporters believe it's one of the only ways to keep Colstrip alive. But opponents said it's unfair to customers when cheaper energy is available. Members of the House Energy Committee said they couldn't support a bill to help one specific company. The future of Montana's marijuana laws are taking shape in the legislature. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian has the details. The Montana Senate Select Committee on Marijuana Law wrapped up a week and a half of work on Wednesday, passing its plan for implementing recreational marijuana in the state. For Montanans, we've done an incredible job um, making sure that the will of the voter has been heard, um, making sure that we have a workable product. I'm glad that we worked as hard as we did and brought all the stakeholders to have a discussion with us and I think we are doing right by them. The committee narrowed down three large reform bills and several smaller ones to a single proposal. House Bill 701, sponsored by Republican Representative Mike Hopkins of Missoula. On Wednesday, they passed it 11 to 1, after adding significant amendments of their own. Most of the committee's work was rolled into what members called the Big Amendment. One of the major changes in the amendment was to counties' ability to block marijuana businesses. For counties where most voters rejected I-190, recreational businesses wouldn't be able to operate unless county voters held an election and voted to opt in. In counties where most voters supported 190, recreational sales would be allowed unless cities or counties voted to opt out. The big amendment also made several other changes to the bill, including allowing counties to ask voters for a local option marijuana tax, limiting home growing of recreational marijuana to two mature plants per person and four per household, and eventually redirecting some tax revenue back to conservation programs and veterans services, as I-190 initially called for. The bill as amended must now go through engrossing. It could be ready to be debated by the full Senate either Thursday or Friday. If the Senate approves, the House will have to decide whether to accept their version of the bill. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. The committee also added one smaller amendment requiring the Montana Department of Revenue to destroy marijuana and marijuana-infused products that fail quality testing. Well, Governor Greg Gianforte was in Billings and signed a bill into law that provides another option to pay for health care. Senate Bill 101 makes it state law for patients to cut out the middleman and pay for their health care at the source. The ceremony was held at Flex Fam Family Health and is one of eight direct patient care clinics in Montana. At these locations, patients pay doctors directly and don't have to use insurance. Uh, they don't limit the duration of patient visits. You come in, you talk at, with, the, with your provider until you get resolution. And there's no limit on how many visits you can do. You're paying a subscription and it's basically like a buffet for all the medical care that you want. And even with 700 subscribers, the owner of Flex Family Health suggests having some insurance for potential emergencies. Well, now it's time to get a check of weather with Miller over in the Weather Center. Miller, what's going on today? Well, uh, some of us starting off very nice out there, but we do have that cold front moving in, already starting to affect the northwest corner of the state. Let's take a look at some temperatures right now in the radar. You can see rain and snow coming into Kalispell, Cut Bank, starting to move into Haver as well along the High Line, Missoula, rain, snow mix pushing into Helena as we speak, and the colder temperatures taking effect. We've got 37 in Kalispell, down to 29 right now in Cutbank. Eastern side of the state and southern parts, we're looking pretty good right now. Still have some sunshine, but that uh, those clouds will start to move in today later this afternoon and of course as we get into this evening uh, as that cold front sinks further south so will come the rain and snow showers now how long will this last and does it affect the weekend i'll let you know with the main forecast coming up victoria thank you so much miller this week's fire at the gunther apartments in shoto destroyed the building devastating those who live there and everyone in the community mtn's cassandra soto followed up with the residents 
The Gunther Apartments caught fire Tuesday night in what residents describe as a boom. The Shoto Fire Department worked through the night to control the flames. Now we wait for the state fire marshal to release his findings in the investigation of what started the fire. We were sitting there and, and all of a sudden we heard this bang, this boom. And I didn't think anything of it. I thought, well, maybe they're just, you know, working on the apartment or something. Little did Raylene Beauregard and her fellow tenants know they would be leaving everything behind, including some of her beloved pets. My whole identity is gone. My driver is it's just so scary. Everything, it's all gone. My kitties are gone. I was able to save my dog but not my kitties, and it breaks my heart knowing that, that that happened to them. Beauregard is not alone in her loss. It has been confirmed that Thor, the pup of Joseph Ripley, who we spoke to on Tuesday, was taken by the flames. News that makes tenants who did get to save their pets even more thankful. She's all that mattered. So, yeah, could to be happier. Lost pretty much everything else but it. Knowing that my dog got out, that's good enough. For apartment manager Susan James, the loss of the building takes away the memories she had of helping her late father renovate the apartments in 1985. It was just like watching another part of him leave again. A lot of history and stuff, and it just really was hard to just watch it just burn up and not being able to do anything. James is now opening her doors at the Big Sky Motel to seven of her 16 residents that were displaced by the fire with the help of the Red Cross, who is footing the bill. Our goal is to help the residents find a permanent solution to being displaced. And so we offer resources to find them a new rental. We help them along the way with some financial assistance. The residents who didn't have a place to stay, they're in one of the motels here and we are providing meals and lodging, and we will be doing some casework today to see what their further needs are. In Shoto, Cassandra Soto, MTN News. Thank you so much, Cassandra. Well, we have more news ahead on the new news. Man's best friend, and for some, a saving grace. We'll tell you what the state legislature has in the works to help our veterans. The time is 12.07, but first, Miller's here next with your statewide weather forecast.